All right. So today on the Lego Chronicles podcast, I've got a special guest. This is my dad, John, and he came up here to help us move our RV down to Vancouver, Washington, and uh, we did a bunch of work on it. But before we get into that later in the show, today we are going to be building this. Um, this is the set to 2018 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon and the 1970 Dodge Charger RT, which is cool, but I don't know why they didn't do the Charger and the Charger. Maybe because the new Charger kind of sucks. Who makes a four-door muscle car? I don't think you're allowed to have a muscle car by muscle car criteria, are you? If it's got four doors? I don't think it's a four-door, no. Yeah, it doesn't count. It should be a two-door. Yeah, it's just dumb. <clears throat> it's like the electric Mustang. Okay. Speaking of that, um, Mopar, is do- isn't that? It's a sad day. Yeah. Hell is frozen over. Yeah. Mopar is uh, no longer got the demon. No. Nope. It's going to be electric. Yeah. Oh, it's probably faster, honestly, which is even more sad. A lot more torque. Yeah. Can't make the torque like of these. electric motor. Right. It's direct. It used to be, oh, is it turbo or super? Well, it's electric because that is free power. Yeah. So what one do you want to work on first? They're separated, so each bag is like, so these two bags. Oh, maybe not. Okay, cool. So before I've done these, oh, no, it is. Okay. Interesting. Let's check it out. Got one, two. I think we're going to start. We're just going to go through, it looks like. So before that, I've done the duos like this where it has two cars. Mm -hmm. Um They've been separated. So one and two was the one car, and two and three was the other car. Okay. But it looks like this is all together. So we'll just get started with this is bag one. And then I think that's the demon first. So we'll start with that. What? So you're, so this set, I really got this set for you quite a while ago. Uh, this is a retired set. And. I wanted to get it because you're a Mopar guy. Like, yeah. you made me a Mopar guy. It's Mopar or no car <laughs> till the day you die, right? Yep. And um, this was retired. And I did. I was waiting. I could never get you around. I live far. So I built the the Challenger, or the I think, I think it was a purple Challenger, and then the Dragster. And then I got this one, which was retired, but still at a fair price. And this has the classic Charger, which is a little cooler. Um, I think the other one was a classic Challenger, and this is mm-hmm. modern. But yeah, so this, you actually have a um, view. So what was like the first Mopar? What got you into Mopar? Uh, my dad. He had Chargers. His buddies had Chargers with Hemis and stuff in them. And oh, wow. And <clears throat> darts and dusters. So that's pretty cool. What mm. was the first car that you like? What was the first car that you got in? Like, what did he have when you? What's the first car you can remember? He had a '63 uh, Plymouth Sport Fury. Whoa, with a 440 uh, push button. Oh wow! Automatic transmission. So same as the one in your Dart or a push button. Now what's push that? Push button, uh, three or five buttons on the dash, reverse, neutral, but uh, really? third, second, and first. That's fancy. Yeah. That's like some new stuff. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, we got the button on the dash. And I've the, never uh, heard of that. So what kind of car is that? Uh, Plymouth. A, Fu- a road 63 Fury? Plymouth Sport Fury. Sport Fury. Hmm. And then he had a 65 uh, Plymouth Belvedere with a 383 with a factory four-speed with a bench seat. Wow. Oh, the bench seats are cool. Which is rare. Yep. I tried looking for one for the <clears throat> Dart. I think we'll put this bag up in the big tray. So tell me more about this. Uh, the I'm not familiar. These are so I know like mid fit mid sixties and like obviously late sixties and seventies cars. I'm not too familiar with these cars that you the two that you just referenced. Uh, the he had those. I think I was a baby when he had those, and That's he still cool. actually has them. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. They're in pieces, but he still has them. That's cool. Yeah. I really enjoy. Um, I mean, that's kind of the story with your your car, the Dodge Dart. He does have a green Charger, though, no? Yeah, yeah. 70, that's a seventy two uh, okay. Charger SE. Oh, it's yeah. got a four forty. That's awesome. That's a good motor. Yeah. 
Now, like, so I've got the, I used to have that 07 Volvo, right? Mm -hmm. And the Hemi and the Volvo, so the Volvo kind of has the same situation, I think. And it's probably not quite the same, but there's like, there was the R design back when it came out. That was a big deal. And that car's rare because they only sold like 1,200 per year for four years in Mm -hmm. the United States under that model. And it's quick, you know, for a for a foreign yeah. um, stock, it's three hundred and three hundred. But it had the big thing was, it's the R design oh. straight five. Yeah. So it was inline five, high pressure turbo. Yeah. And you could build them, but only so far because they put so much into this little block. They mm-hmm. shaved every single ounce, every millimeter they could out of that block. And so if you pushed any more than like three fifty or four hundred. Yeah. You crack the block, yep. and so then you'd port it, sleeve it, and you could get around it. But you just rebuilt the whole engine, and so a lot of people want the coveted rights to say, "I've got the R." Right? Mm-hmm. It's bragging rights, but really, the the gearhead doesn't want the R. He yeah. wants like a R chassis for the active yep. chassis and the good suspension. But then I was reading further. Really, then you just, if you're getting really into gearhead stuff with those cars, you get your own adjustable suspension. You don't need that. You don't want the electronic suspension. You want to build your own Mm -hmm. uh, camber (laughs) and lean and for all this for body sway. And they took the the T5, which I learned from you, which is just a classification of engine. Mm -hmm. But essentially, they just took the normal four-cylinder turbo beefed up the turbos and everything like mm-hmm. they were going to do anyways. And so a guy like me that doesn't know a lot about, like I love cars and uh, muscle cars and stuff, but that's when I was like, okay, that must be like the 440 to the Hemi. Cause you can make a 440 way better, bigger or better, just as good as a Hemi. Yeah. But that Hemi, you're paying the premium yep. and it's already to go. Yeah. Like the R was ready to go. Yeah. I got 300 and 300. You're going to build yours to get to mine and then make it better, which is still cheaper and a better engine. And you kind of did, you went that route. You yeah. went with the more common engine that you could build bulletproof. Yeah. I mean, that thing's still sitting in the car today. Oh yeah. Yeah. So over 500 horse. What? That's awesome. What, uh, <clears throat> Was it, what was the decision in that? Because it sounds like your dad had a few 440s, so he seems uh, to be pretty. The, a lot of it was the price and availability of the 426 Hemi because they're not available, and if you can find them, they're super expensive. Right. <clears throat> that um, that's a cool car, though. I just saw a Hemi Barracuda at the in the Dells. Um, man, if it, it said Hemi. On the you know, it was the oh, Hemi model yeah. and it had it on the on the hood and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so he's not gonna lie, right? So if that obviously I didn't look, I just mm-hmm. passed it. And it was clean. And I'm all I can think is that's a million dollar car if it matches. Oh yeah. If those numbers are matching. It was yeah. a CUDA, not a challenger. I oh. thought it was a challenger. When I saw it, it was a CUDA, mm-hmm. I was like, Oh my god, that's a yeah. million dollars rolling down the street. Yeah, that's kinda rare. <laughs> like and I just Challengers wanna, are rare though with Hemis. Yeah. Yeah, those are, I think those two, it's like tied between what one's the most expensive muscle car, mm-hmm. because either, it, what it's really just what one's on the market. Yeah. Because those two cars are, um, it's, it's, you can never find them. Yeah. You remember that uh, lady, <clears throat> he was the neighbor that had rebuilt the Roadrunner, the Taco Bell lady? Oh, oh God. Jan. Yeah, those were cool cars. Yeah. She's got a lot of old cars. Yeah, I'm jealous. So... When you were uh, when you were younger, what like what'd you do? Did you? I know I have some of your old Legos. Actually, I still have them today. They're in the other room. When did you get into like what'd you do as a kid? What'd you play uh, toys? <laughs> I built. I think when I had Legos, I don't remember. I was young, and I would build trucks. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I think um, we played with Legos a lot too. Yeah. Kid I mostly I built trucks from scratch. That's awesome. Because I had a whole, you know, I'd have like the flat ones, you know, and these pieces. These are a little different Legos than what I used to have. Right. A um, bunch like this and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I would just start building trucks. Had wheels and axles and everything. I'd build truck and trailers. That's cool. Yeah. So you, that's interesting because now you're you're heavy mechanic. Yeah. So your dad was a truck driver. As far as I know, he's always been a truck driver. What did he do when you he's were younger? Mechanic. He's actually a mechanic. 
Oh, okay. So he just picked up truck driving yeah. as a second career. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that makes a lot more sense. I thought he just did that for a job and hobbied as a mechanic. No, he's actually a mechanic. Oh, wow. Like my grandpa was, and he was, and now I am. How uh, How long? He's been a mechanic for 45 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. You've been a mechanic for, what, 30 years? Uh, Yeah. Over 30, right? A little over, over 30. Yeah. That's awesome. Because I worked with him when I was a kid, and then... I got hired on as a mechanic at Walmart for 24 years, and then now I'm at Caltrans. That's awesome. That's a that's a good, <clears throat> and that's interesting too. Um, why don't you tell the people how you got from the Walmart situation, like how you ended up? Because I think it's really interesting, and it's you that inspired this train of thought. But I've always found it very curious as to how someone finds their groove and obviously you generational mechanics right you guys are mechanics generationally yeah. and that you know is it <clears throat> is it the way you were raised or is it in your blood and i think with you it's a little of both because it's obviously you were raised that way but yeah. you have the ability to just take an engine apart leave it on the floor for a, a month no, and then yeah. put it back together <laughs> that's not no yeah. one taught you that no you know, I could never do that. Yeah. You know, if all this, all these Legos were on the ground, I'd be screwed. I wouldn't, you couldn't have me disassemble a car, whether it's a Lego or a real car or a bicycle. Yeah. I could probably manage a bicycle. You're talking 10 parts, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not very confident that I, I need to put it back immediately. Yeah. And so, with that being said, I was thinking, like, where, like, um, it's funny how you found your lane because you didn't pursue mechanic. And no. And so, uh, why don't you share? Yeah, why don't you share us? Uh, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about that and how you ended up in uh, that. I I interviewed for uh, Walmart when I worked there in the, on all the trucks and trailers, and then I spent 24 years there working on all their stuff, and then going to mechanics competitions throughout the United States and. And then after a while, they just decided to change some things, and I had been trying to get on with the state and get a retirement package going on, and so the right timing came, and decided to leave, and now I got can't my look own, back, huh? No, no, way got, better. Got my own shop. I got a service truck, and I just travel around doing uh, different things. That's cool. And then I thought it, I always thought it was a ironic story. So before I ask this question, um. What made you want to be it? Like, how'd you go from a clear bloodline and lineage of mechanics? Like, why wasn't that the first thing? Like, what was your thought when you were coming of age to get a job? Like, what was going through your mind where you were like, because <clears throat> clearly you have people that could help you probably get a mechanic's job. Yeah. You know, so what was it that made you say, nah, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to do it as a hobby. And then, or was like, you went... Because you have a clear path. To me, as an outsider looking in, there seems to be a clear path. And especially as like a iron worker, I've seen multiple generation iron workers, just how you are a multi-generational mechanic. Yeah. And so how did you divert that path? Like what made you take that other route? Because uh, when I first started there at Walmart, I wasn't actually... A well, um, sorry. Before, I'm in... Uh, I'm, I was talking with the sheriff. Like, how did you take oh, that route, right? Like, right uh, out of high school, how did you like, go, I don't want to be a mechanic, I want to pursue yeah, this? Because well, I never heard you talk about it, except for the fact that you've said, I wanted to, I did this, and then I didn't pursue it. But I never, you never, like, shown a passion for law enforcement. I mean, obviously, we're yeah. friends with him, but it wasn't like, yeah, I no, love being I, a cop, uh, I wanted to do this. I went and... I went to school, my dad went to school for law enforcement also, so I decided, okay, I'm going to try that out. You know, they, okay. make, they make good money, you know, they do this, do that, you know, it's a good job to have, and um, went to college for it for, I don't know, a year and a half, and then I thought, no, okay, this isn't for me, you know, I don't want to get shot at, and this and that, and so then I ended up uh, leaving the school, and... Uh, I had auto shop in school. I took a machine shop class at the college. I built a couple of engines out there, and so you weren't just strictly in a program for you. You took you ex used your full resources while you're yeah. in school. Yeah, that's cool. And then after that, I just started doing my own thing, and 
worked with my dad a lot because he worked at uh, various different places. And then um, I would go with him when I was a kid. I was probably 12, 13 years old working on trucks. Oh, that's awesome. So it just took you, and then you kind of got it. Yeah. Okay. But there was a lot of times, too, I'd miss stuff. You know, I'd I'd be going here and helping him out, and, you know, my weekends were working on stuff. So, but it was fun. If I didn't have him teaching me that, I wouldn't have had the jobs I had, and I wouldn't be where I'm at. Right. And, um... I think that's really cool. I didn't know your dad pursued the same career. So you really were following the footsteps of your predecessors. Just yeah. uh, Also, I mean, in the same way, do you think you would have loved it as much if you hadn't answered that question of, like, what, is, what else is out there? Because for me, like, trying to do something else, it just drew me back to the thing I love the most. Yeah. I I don't know. I like it. I do a lot of side jobs at home, you know, so I can make good money doing it. You know, I don't charge what the shops charge, but I can I can make good money. Is it something that you would do if you were weren't getting paid? Uh, yeah, I don't because I don't I don't hate working on stuff. I actually enjoy it. It depends. Some jobs I don't like as much as others, but you know, if I'm working on an old car, that's cool. Right. I like doing that. But if I'm having to pull a transmission out <laughs> of a truck and put a clutch in it, that's not my favorite thing to do. But right. You know, no big deal. I if I if someone asked me, I would say that. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you do a lot of work. And again, I was saying out here today, like playing at home is it's work. Work is just playing it. Like uh, yeah. when you're doing stuff at home, you're just playing with big toys. Yeah. Like men just playing with toys until yeah. it's hot or it sucks, and yeah. then it's work. <laughs> but otherwise, it's fun. Oh, and yeah. then once you're in that transmission or it's hotter than hell out, and you're like, yeah. oh, this is not fun anymore. The playtime needs to be rescheduled. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, like today. <laughs> yeah, it got hot. I had to go. I was studying for my... Uh, I got, I'm in my fourth-year apprenticeship school, and I was studying for my final I have tomorrow. And I just I was looking out there. I'm like, man, I got to just go hang out with you for a little bit because... It was rough. It was hot. I didn't yeah. want to leave you out there. I'm oh, like, no, damn, I mean, it was it's hot. Tough to do, though. But, yeah, <clears throat> we, get, we get suffer together yep. for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. I didn't know. So, that's interesting. So, with that being said, uh, another oh, interesting, because, like, you do, I know you love mechanicking, and you do, like you said, if it's a cool classic or something, but a question of mine is, like, um, <clears throat> Is it just a matter of time? But I, what happened to your passion project with your car? Like, what fell off with the... I know you love it to death. You yeah. never let someone sell it, but you kind of, like, let it be. What happened there? Time. Just time? Yeah. Not enough or just Not enough too time. long apart? Because I end up making... Uh, all People always ask me, hey, can you help me with this? Yeah. Can you do this? Yeah. Can you do that? And then my car just sits. You just sits. become a slave to your own skills. Yeah. Yeah. That's like what when I, I go yeah. home tomorrow, I have three side jobs sitting there waiting for me. And you came up here on vacation to do more work. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, which, you know, no big deal. I make money at it, so it's no, not a big deal. But one of these days, I'll get my car done. Yeah. Yeah, I was just curious um, because, you know, this this particularly, like the channel, I've uh, been building it up on YouTube, and I knew this day was going to come with the kid, and it's hard enough working 60 hours a week, have a wife, yeah. try and be a good husband, and and build this other side business of yeah. doing something. It's a passion project, but it's also, you know, with a structure, something I have to put, I can't just, like, oh, I'm not doing it today, or I don't feel like it this three weeks or whatever yeah. it'll it'll fall off yeah and then like trying to find time for so that that as well as the balance like it's gone mm-hmm. there's no time no i mean it's eight o'clock right now oh, we yeah. worked all day and luckily the baby's done we got this window where we can sit here and have this yeah. conversation but yeah, yeah it's, it's like, there's not enough time in the day yeah that <laughs> uh it happens a lot with kids huh mm-hmm. what it gets worse <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh so when you so back to we'll get into that later i gotta ask advice parent advice but when so so you 
you build cars with your dad. You started 13, 14. Ironically, it's the same age I started welding. was 14, 15. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird. I, I always like to ask someone's origin of the thing that they start doing as a profession. Because yeah. there's people that have jobs, and there's people that have professions. Yeah. And there's career jobs, and there's, you know, career professions. But I the way I, in my... The, with me saying that, the way I, I'm trying to portray it is that I consider the professionals the people passionate for it. Yeah. The people that, like, you can obtain those skills, professional skills later in life, but mm-hmm. for this context, it's who has had it from birth. Yeah. Not from birth, but from the second you knew, like, you know, you're yeah. becoming of age. And that's when you, it seems like boxers, racers, can you know whatever oh, skill yeah. you have anyone that is a professional that is the top of their game yeah they usually started at an age where their body developed in a way that like you start doing these things at that age while you're growing you become that person mm-hmm. like i have better ability to get in positions and be more comfortable welding that's all i've ever known yeah. so my body will naturally pick up certain positions hold certain poses do yeah. things you have been tearing things apart and forgetting, not forgetting how to put them together, yeah. or forgetting and remembering, like, damn, I can't do that again. Yeah. That failure hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but in my field, when I forget something, it fucking hurts. Mm-hmm. It's not fun, and I can't imagine getting all the way to a, through a block or whatever, oh, or yeah. building a new transmission or like a <clears throat> our Ranger. Remember when you put, helped me with the clutch no. on the Ranger and we forgot to put a fucking four by in there? Yeah, and the engine popped up. Yeah. Oh man, that was that sucked. Yeah, but you didn't know until it happened, yeah, right? Like true. you got to learn. Yeah, that was miserable. <clears throat> I was talking about that at work the other day. So. Yeah, it's everything's repetitious though. Basically, right. you know, you do it enough times. It's just about a different, just, so how many out of all the, with that, out of all of the, um, you mentioned it earlier, like a lot of cars, different manufacturers across the globe, Mm -hmm. global companies can be Japan, America, Mexico, Mm -hmm. wherever, um, they use a lot of the same things. So how many different like configurations of one thing is like engines or you know a v6 how many different ways can you build a v6 or a v8 a v8 more there's probably a lot but like how many times oh, yeah. do you run across uh different companies that seem pretty similar in build Is uh, you it know common oh yeah because they're basically the cams in the cylinder head or the cams in the block Everything else is the same. All engine parts are the same. It's got pistons, rods, crank. So you mean cam. the cam is on the top? Yeah. The head? Mm-hmm. I didn't know the that. The newer engines. Is that an over, overhead cam, I guess? Yeah. The newer engines are all modular engines, and they run overhead cam. Oh, wow. Compared yeah. to a, a cam in the block. Right. But... Is that what gives you... So what gives you that nice lope? Like that fucking... A big whoa. cam. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And you... Can you do that with an overhead? Uh, normally not. Because it needs because, to come from the bottom. Yeah. They don't... A lot of the newer engines are overhead cams, so they're not... They won't pass smog if you put a bigger cam in them, so they don't make bigger uh, cams for the overhead engines. You know what that problem is? You can buy them, but they're not like race car cam. I got you. Oh, okay, okay. So it's like... Too, it's dumbed down for, yeah. for smog. Yeah. But guess what? Not up here. Yeah, that's what yeah. the guy was just telling me. Yeah, you want to throw a diesel in your Jeep? You yeah. Throw a diesel. You want nice. to have a diesel Corolla? You got a big old company. Nice. <laughs> you can make Frankenstein cars out <clears throat> here. Yeah, because ours didn't have... We got smog where we live. Yeah, it sucks. They, <clears throat> when I... Um, I hate that. That's the only reason I ever got rid of the Ranger. Yeah. Gross polluter. Yeah. Whatever that means. You want to take over? No, oh, go ahead. There's here. I'll pass you the pieces. I think we're right here. I was kind of losing track. Yeah, put the red one on. You just got to put these two on. Okay. Yeah, and then um, I I think a lot of like the, I try and like isolate what what made me want to build things, and you and I we would dump out all my Legos on the ground when the power go out. That was like the oh, funnest yeah. when the power went out. Playing Legos, Dad's not going anywhere. We're gonna play yeah. for two days. Yeah. And when you dump, when you saw that barrel get dumped, you knew you were there for a couple yep. of days. And we would build trucks, Walmart super centers, trailers, yep. 
That's interesting. Oh yeah. What drew you to the to the building of semi like trucks and trailers? I I don't know. I don't know That's why I always weird. like trucks. Because you end up a truck mechanic, so yeah. it's just kind of ironic that because your dad was a mechanic but had a lot of cars, yeah. but then you ended up as a truck guy. And then I don't know why every time I'd build something, it was a truck. Huh? It's like <laughs> never a car. It was always a truck. That's weird, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of funny. I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. I'll pass these to you. I think they go okay. uh, along the trim. Oh, on the bottom? Yeah. What, um, so when was it that, so for those that don't know, technically, John is my stepdad, but he's been there from weeks old, right? When did you two meet mom? Old. I was two weeks old. Yeah. His only dad I ever knew. I have I know my I've reacquainted with my biological father. We have a great relationship and uh love him very much. But my whole life you were my dad. Yeah. And so what was it like stepping into a just even considering a relationship with <laughs> an, a woman that has a uh, a child? Uh, it was you know? hard at first. Yeah. But I would I don't that's a lot to take a lot to deal yeah. with. Yeah. But it I don't know, I wouldn't change anything. Well, grateful. I'm very grateful. That's one of the things I value. Um, honestly, I never told you this, but that's the, one of the things that is like one of the... You, it's like I don't even know how to explain it. The fact for someone to do that is um, very noble and like yeah. very selfless thing to do to take on another man's burden and um, raise it with... like That's love. That's yeah. full love for my mom you know adopting love for me you yeah. know you didn't you didn't show up just like oh i love this kid the day you <laughs> met me you know what i mean yeah. like you had to really love her to yeah. learn to love oh, me yeah. cuz i'm a, a loud and so, a baby right yeah. and you're young you weren't around babies no <laughs> it's you know it's expensive you know you don't have money when you're young and kids are expensive and you know but it, it all works out and then um, so that was, uh, to, I follow that with how, so I earlier asked how you ended up a mechanic, but I meant, I was fishing for how you ended up a mechanic at Walmart, because I think that's an ironic story. Oh. And you weren't a mechanic. You no. didn't take a mechanic job. You weren't supposed to be a mechanic no. still. So you, so you go from being, wanting to be a sheriff to, uh, that's not for me, but you're still not pursuing being a mechanic. No. Even though you're great at it, and you, well, you might not have been great then, but you definitely had knowledge, because you yeah. didn't, they, the position was yours. Yeah. So, like, obviously, <laughs> there was something that you knew you could do, but you just were avoiding oh, yeah. it at all costs. Yeah. Um, why don't you share with us, like, how you, and how Walmart made you have to switch your role. Yeah, it's because... When I so I worked in the warehouse, and then when I got married to your mom, I was working with your grandma at the same time as a forklift driver. And then once I became kind of related to her, I couldn't work with her anymore because it was a conflict of interest. So I took a position out in the shop as a fueler washer. Oh, really? So yeah. I thought you went out there as a mechanic. Like no, so once they figured out that I knew how to work on stuff, I moved up within four or five months oh, wow. to a trailer mechanic. And then I ended up going to a, a heavy duty diesel mechanic within a year and a half after that. Did you learn a lot? Um, was it like something where you were just putting in your dues or did you have the knowledge already? I kind of learn already knew from my dad. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Is it hard to have for me? Um, I'm far better welder than most people I've ever met in my field. Mm -hmm. And it was that way since I was in school and like right out of college, my college did a great job mm -hmm. and they trained us right. Yeah. And there's even other co other classmates I graduate with that are superintendents of general contractors now. And it's like, man, you can't find a good welder like they did, like they produced oh, yeah. us. Yeah. Did you ever feel that? Like, when uh, did you ever have an ego about like, man, I know I shouldn't be here. I should be there. Like, I yeah, should. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Especially with the pressure of kids. Yeah, and, probably a little bit at first because I was a trailer mechanic and I was working on trucks. So they were making more than me. And But you're and doing I, their work. Yeah, and you're like, I, I have more this. stuff than they did. So yeah. basically I thought, okay. And then, but 
I can't complain because I got promoted super quick, moved up the chain, and then was topped out, and then was there for 24 years. That's pretty awesome. And you could have gone further, but you chose... Yeah, I didn't right? want to be in supervision. Yeah, yeah. Less yeah. headache. Yeah. You want to come home and work stays at work. Yeah. Except for the work at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Um, I just thought that was interesting because you and I are both specialists, you know, in a certain field and at a young age mm-hmm. had the knowledge and the f- f- superior ability to do something. Yeah. And like for me, it was hard. And you grew up in a corporate, like you grew up maturing with that ego Mm -hmm. in a corporate structure and a a kid. I didn't. So I was able to be reckless. I was able to be like, fuck that. I'm not doing it. You know, I know I'm smarter than you. Why are you making double my money? Like I'm doing your job, you you know? And like, I definitely lost a job or two or quit a job or two. I probably put my foot. I know I did. It's not a probably. And I say, if I start, if I got in the union at 18, I would be kicked out. That's what I tell people. Like, I got in when I was supposed to. Yeah. And, um, but I learned the hard way. How did you recognize that? Because you clearly did. Because you just said you, you felt you had that sense. But how did you recognize to keep yourself in? Like, how did you check yourself? What was um, it that, like, you know, basically, I mean, you know, I would just, you know, whatever they told me, just I'd just do it. do it. Just happy to have the yeah. job. Yeah. You know, and then, like, now, whatever, I'm pretty much on my own. So they let me do whatever I want. I've proved to them that I know what's going on, and they, uh, here you go. Here's a service truck. Do whatever you want to do. If you want to work overtime, go ahead and work overtime. If you don't, you know, we'll go from there. That's cool. That's so, real. That's freedom. And yeah. see, like, um, I didn't really flip it around. Other side? Yeah, like that. Yeah. I didn't really appreciate or understand. Like, I had an understanding of uh, delayed gratification from uh, up one stud, center the, oh, yeah, right like there. that. I had a sense of delayed gratification and I understood what it was from just, you can't be a fabricator and not appreciate del- delayed gratification. Same as a mechanic. I mean, yeah. you know, you go from it's together to it's apart and hopefully it gets back together. Yeah. And like, that takes time. Yeah. And so I just I didn't have that sense of uh the same like even though I knew about it it was still short term, right? Cuz this mm-hmm. project I don't know what it is. I'm going to design it, I'm going to build it, boom, it's done. Yeah. So even, uh, 2 weeks, a month, 6 months. Yeah. But that's it. And yeah. it's direct progress every week. Every week I'm doing more. I'm getting more. I'm doing yeah. better. Oh, even yeah. if it was just practicing, my welds are getting better. But yeah. that check never got better. Yeah. And it didn't follow my progress. Yeah. And it frustrated me. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, and then people, you know, and then you become the squeaky wheel that's not fixable. Yeah. You keep greasing it, you get, well, you know, you got to eventually so shut up. That's kind of how it is everywhere, though. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. I learned that, you know, over time. And it helped a lot to be in the union. <clears throat> and even since I got in the union, um, settled down a lot. I I just, you learn, Mm -hmm. and it sucks to be that guy that has the skill, because it also, you get poked, you get, you know, pushed, Mm -hmm. so just having, did did that ever happen to where people saw that you knew more than them, and like, resented that? Oh, yeah. How do you, how do you handle those situations? That still happens today, that's why, it's a very... I just motor through it. Just you say know. less and keep yeah, going. Yeah, there's people that I got promoted over that have been there a lot longer than me. So I would get promoted and go from there. Just be grateful. Yeah. I just had a hard time in my past, especially when I... Coming out here, like coming from the union to... Oh, huh, should be married. There you go. Hmm. Let me see that. What's going on? Did I miss a piece? I don't think so. There we go. Like, um, like, so I got organized in. You technically got organized in because you're in a union, right? Yeah. I mean, you pursued it, but I think they'd still consider it organized because you came from non-union. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why, but in my trade, there was a level of like, you're stealing my work, like a famine mentality. Oh, And yeah. I thrive off of a, a prosperity mentality. Like, you know, 
Mm -hmm. We're all here that share the love, share the load, everything. Yeah. Up that goes. There go. And right there. Oh, okay. On the red and the blue, yep. And it just <clears throat> never understood why these people were haters, for lack of a better term. Like, And I, it bothered me that not everybody liked me. <laughs> Oh. And as weird as that sounds, like, obviously, as an adult, you know, understand, like, you're not yeah. going to be everyone's friend. But no. as a kid, I was everybody. Like, I, everyone loved me, and everyone just mm -hmm. not always praised me over whatever. But if I made something that was quality, they would recognize quality and never hate on it, never oh, shit yeah. on it, never. And then when I went to Florida, I all changed. And there was people that you shine, and I'm just trying to make you shine. I want, you're my boss. All right, and I would take yeah. that role, right? <laughs> Even though I'm making less, I got over that. And I would take the role as I'm just here to be a part of the team mm -hmm. and I want to make you look good. So if you give me your, you know, whatever you need me to do, and if you know, if you're struggling and you want me to help you with the prints, I'm going to mm -hmm. keep my mouth shut and I'm just going to help you. And you yep. shining makes me shine because when you get that OT, guess who you're going to ask for? Yep. You're going to come get me. Yeah. But they would then safeguard the prints and be like i can't i gotta start oh, getting yeah. guys like this I'm like, okay no no and then they then this i've honestly had sabotage i've had a couple oh, wow. situations where they sabotaged a project or did something to where they knew like it would get my money is a term we use when you're getting fired mm -hmm. essentially you're getting fired but we call it layoffs but yeah there's been situations where it was like out of my control and i was like well what could have been done? Oh, yeah. And I just, I don't know. It uh, it doesn't happen as much anymore, but I just wondered if, because I know you've always had those skills, and then you go to these competitions, and these aren't some, you know, no small it's... competition. This is a multi-million dollar yeah. process. Throughout a year, they send you... What was it like when you got the request? Or when you... So you, I'm guessing, so they have... Mechanics rodeos, right? Yep. At Walmart. So you you get invited, or is all mechanics eligible? Uh, you have to uh, win a competition. So well, that at the Walmart, right? Yeah. Your local one. So you win the local competition, okay. then you do a state competition, and uh, then you do a regional competition. Then you can do uh, nationals. What was it like when you... Did you go into that? Like, oh, I'm going to kick ass. I'm going to win this shit. No. Your first time. You're very, no, so your nervous. very first competition. Because I didn't think I was going to do very good. Did you just become a mechanic? Like, how soon? My first one, I think yeah. I was a fewer washer when I oh, won wow. one in Red Bluff. I didn't even think you would be eligible. Yeah. So how did you manage that? Because uh, I knew more than what I'd lead on to. Ah, uh, so you were smart too. You keep yeah. those cards behind your. Yeah. Oh, uh, see, I wasn't that guy. I wish I would have. <laughs> I was just out there. I was like, "Look what I got!" Yeah. And I yeah. think that rubbed. So that that answers my question. Yeah. That keeps you. You don't get yep. that spotlight. People aren't going to hate you so no. much. And you. That's interesting. Yeah. Where did that just something that you had naturally understand how to read people and stuff and like know that I need to not show everything or is that something you learned um, at a younger age? It yeah, it kind of comes, you know. It's like you know, just kind of lay back and watch and see what happens. You know, uh, yeah, I do, I do understand that. I've uh, I've <laughs> I learned that a long time ago. I just didn't practice it. Oh yeah. I learned that when I was, um, you remember the rope, the same people, Jan or Jim or mm -hmm. whatever, they had the arena down there, yeah. little auntie's house, mm -hmm. and I would go down there, and I'd go roping, and I just wanted to learn how to rope. I was just hanging out, and then I eventually was like, you know what, start throwing a loop. Someone handed me a rope or something, I'm just disgusting. Yeah. Doesn't <laughs> It'd be a guy trying to... Use a wrench as a hammer. Oh, like yeah. you're like, dude, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So everybody and their mother wanted to give me some advice. Yep. And a wise man walked over to me and I don't know who it was. He said, Look, kid, you take everything with a grain of salt. You listen to everyone because you appreciate oh, yeah. the fact that they're giving you an advice and they don't have to do that. Yeah. And that was important that he said that. Yep. And then he followed it by saying, Don't fucking listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Respect them. 
listen to him, give him your attention. But mm-hmm. if it sounds like bullshit, sift it out. Yeah. And he said, and if it doesn't, and you want to try it, try it. And if it doesn't, if it still doesn't jive, <clears throat> sift it out. And you can tell him next time you see him, I, I tried it. It just isn't working for me. And mm-hmm. maybe you're doing it wrong, and they'll help you, or maybe they really are full of shit. And I, at that point, started taking that into practice, and it took years to get better at it, but it taught me that, um, you know, everyone has something to, to give. Oh, Even yeah. the, someone that you think is the dumbest person you ever met, you could probably learn something from them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's it. Yeah. That's interesting. You, you kind of had that. You knew, like, I'm going <clears> to hold this, because... Like, um, when I would go out and push that, like, be too flamboyant about the skills I did have, Mm -hmm. people didn't want to take my advice, even if I was right. Or, you know, they just already was, it was already a conflict, and I never even knew it. I was naive. I didn't understand. And I had a guy walk up to me once, and we were both welding in this chute. It was a a hopper type deal for an asphalt plant, Mm -hmm. and it was was a chute. And there was a, st- a seam weld, full hundred percent seam weld across the whole thing on the top, and they were fitting the bo- or they're they're fitting up the top, and you're supposed to not get ahead of the fitters on the other side, oh, yeah. getting the tight, mm-hmm. and then the bottom too. So we, were, I'd work the top, and then I work the bottom, and they'd stay ahead of me. This guy just ran the whole top, and the mm-hmm. welds were terrible too. But the guy, my boss, comes out, and this is in Florida, and he goes uh, a company called Gencor. Uh, really, honestly, the system's really rigged, but for what it was, it was a really good job. For a corporate job, mm-hmm. they could supply you with full clothes, you know, benefits, yeah. pension, uh, or 401k. For for a non-union job, it was a really good job, but mm-hmm. it had a cap, like all, like yeah. Walmart, like all of them. Yep. But if you're content with that, but I just felt my skills weren't being, you know, I had more skills than my money said. And, but this one time I said, well, you know, it wasn't me. I never said it was him. And there's a reason the guy was asking me, right? Mm -hmm. Because he wouldn't ask me if he thought it was me, go ask the other guy. I said, come on, man. You know who, you know, it wasn't me. Yeah. And that's all I said. And that guy got fired and I had an old timer, like six, the old head dude, like 60 years old, Mm. been in that shop 20 years, like, you know, made a career there, built a family, everything. That was his job. Mm-hmm. He had his spot. No one else worked. You know, that was his table. That's where he was. Oh, yeah. And he comes up over to me. Hey, kid. Hey, young blood. These southern guys, I like that term, young blood. <laughs> mm. That's funny. <laughs> hey, young blood, get over here. Let me let me pick your brain a little bit. And uh, he tells me, goes on to tell me, like, if you ever see a man that got fired, come back in this, do- come back through that door, you fucking run. Hmm. Yeah, and he went on to elude the fact that that guy might think that it was me, and I was like, "Whoa, dude! Like what? Because that that wasn't what happened. I didn't rat him out. Like yeah. there was two people in there. Oh, yeah. One can do good work, and one can't. So it wasn't yeah. me. Like he was getting fired either way. But the way it perceived was, I was, you know, making it known, and there was all this like I was like, yeah, I can weld, I can braggadocious and stuff, and so it put the heat on me. And uh, he was like, you just need to be careful. Mm. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. I never considered someone going postal. (laughs) I never. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And it totally, like, it shut me up. I just went back to work and kind of sat with that for a few weeks, Mm. you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, wow. Um, That's real life. And I never really, I didn't understand. If all the stuff that you've worked on, I kind of went on a tangent there, sorry. Um. Out of all the things, these go right here, right here on the grays. Out of all the things, oh. I, I think I jumped. I jumped ahead. Yeah, so you're really right here. Oh, Sorry. I need the fenders. Yep. Oh, yep, and the fenders. So all the things that you have done in your career, if you were to end in your life, well, first, we, we'll get back to that. We haven't talked about how you found your car, how you, your dream car, like, is it? Oh, we haven't even gotten into that. So let me finish this. I got all these questions I wanted to ask. I've been saving for this for a few months. Um, what if you could name five things, five projects, no matter what? It could be building the barn, the house, yeah. the family. Five things, cars primarily. Thinking cars. 
what are five projects that you built that you're ex- like most proud of? That if someone asks, like, what are you gonna brag about? Someone asks, because you're very humble and quiet, very soft spoken person. Uh-huh. Until someone asks you about cars. Yeah. So, like, what are your five proudest moments as a mechanic? Uh, your competition probably, wins. Yeah, Is the it, competition wins were nice. And then, um, you what, know. What did you do for all those people out there across the world that don't know? We know about your competition, but how did you do? And why is the competition coveted? Because is it just Walmart mechanics? Like, okay, big deal. You beat a couple guys at Walmart. No, you're, it's a nationals. So you're competing against guys from FedEx, UPS. Uh, so freight All mechanics. the different companies. Yeah. Big trucking, time. Trucking outfits. Wow. Green waste, truck stops, uh, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Oh, so the on-call guys with, like, Flying yeah. J and... Yep. Okay, so the real deal, the mic- the people that keep the nation running. Yeah. So you're... And out of that, what... Uh, you you went regularly, right? Like, yearly. Yeah, every year. For, wow. I think, five years it was. Wow. That's a, that's crazy. And you yeah. didn't study, right? I mean, as far no, as I... not really. You were working. Because when you yeah. were home, you are working. And when you are at work, you are working. Yeah. And every it, once in a while, I would try to get a little studying in, but... You know, it never really happened. And for a guy that's not, I was all, honestly, as your son, I was always proudest of that. The fact that you didn't have, that's what I was like, man, this guy is just God-given ability to be a mechanic. <laughs> he can go in here, not fucking study, act like it ain't no big deal, just show up for the check oh, and yeah. whoop up on these guys. Like, what was that like? It was nice. Yeah, that's got to feel good, huh? Yeah. No, yeah. it was nice. That's how I feel when I lay down a pretty weld. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we'll have, like, so, so if there's a... Like a cantilever or something, there'll be like five of us, one guy on each point, right? Uh huh. And it's nice to finish first, of course, but you don't always, yeah. you know, that's not how you compete. That's not always how it goes. Guy that finished first might not have the best weld or the best or missed a diagnostic or. Mm-hmm. So when I, I might not be first, but I'd finish that and I'd go, go peek. It's not a competition. Mm-hmm. So I go look at his. It's always a competition to me. And I'm like, all right, all right. He's first, but mine's way better. Yeah. And I just have oh, that, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I did it. No, that's nice. That's cool. Um, did you ever think you'd be doing mechanic competitions? Did you even no, know that was I a thing that they, they did? they had one. Right. And then uh, once I got entered in it, then then it was too much fun to not <laughs> do it again. <laughs> that's cool. So you kind of looking forward to it then? So yeah, you start... and that's the only bad thing about now is I can't, I don't do it anymore. Well, well because my company that I'm at now, they don't do that. Mm-mm. Would they consider it? No, it's no. the state. Oh, so they ain't got money. They're yeah, not trying to be. No. They don't got nothing to prove. Nope. Hmm. Was that something they used as like a um, bragging rights to get more people to your company? I think like, so, is that yeah. like, hey, look, we have our mechanics from our yeah. shop. Do they? We go here. This yeah. is our level. And I of- think they were trying to boost morale and stuff like that. So okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool, though. I mean, I'm sure it helped for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it was a, it was fun. That's really cool. I remember yeah. you guys go on these trips. Yeah, it was cool. It yeah, was cool to see, all too. Over the United States. Yeah. For, for free. getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to sticker these up real okay. quick. What do we need? SRT. There's a, there's a mechanic. So there's not a mechanic, but there's an apprenticeship contest. That they do for iron workers, mm-hmm. and a friend of mine just won it, and I'm gonna because I got the welding skills. I've all, I we're at the union meeting, and she overheard her talking about like her her not flaws but her weak points, mm-hmm. and uh, welding stick welding seventy eighteen mm-hmm. was her weak. Like we don't use that. It's mm-hmm. something you learn, but you don't use it. Not mm-hmm. in our industry. Everything's wire. Mm. And so the uh, NR two thirty two flux core, and so I obviously went to school for it. So I and I've been welding since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So I know plenty. And I was even a welding instructor. Did you Did you know that? No. Oh really? Oh yeah, that's cool. I didn't know you didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah, I was a welding professor at a college. Called me Professor Holbrook. They did nice every day. Yeah. It was weird. 30 fucking kids, kids, 30 men, women, old veterans, oh, young, really? whatever. You yeah, had a guy huh. in my class that had white hair. <laughs> That's cool. That's a weird story. 
he wasn't in my class. I actually taught him at a different job. But um, the dude was murdered somebody. So oh, I asked really? him. He's 63 years old. And I, I'm running this job in San Francisco. I was, should not have been running shit. I was wait. That's when I felt oh, like I was I out of scope. I remember and, hearing that. Yep. And so this guy, I'm teaching him how to weld. And I'm like, hey, man, like, because he doesn't know shit. And I'm like, what? What are you like? Why are you here? Mm -hmm. Why are you restarting your life at 63 years old? Yeah. Like, what are you doing here? And he just goes, he like looked at me like, I got like that deep internal, like, oh man. And he tells me freely, didn't pry it out of him. He goes, I I had to kill a man. I was, what? Mm -hmm. He goes, I killed a man 25 years ago, decapitated him. And I took his head into the police department and turned myself in. (laughs) That's how he says it. And I go, what? He goes, then he tells me why. And uh, this man uh, allegedly had raped his daughter Uh and um, didn't get to speak on it. But I'll take the man at his word because he had enough, you know, he believed it enough to kill the man. But, you know, honestly, the only justified, not to say that any killing, no killing is justified. But when I heard that story... And I was not a parent, and now I understand even more. But at that moment, I was like, you know what? I got mad respect for that man because yeah. he did the crime, but he immediately went to jail. Yeah, and he took himself in there and said, "I did this. And I'm here to pay my fine." And mm-hmm. he did his 25 years. And now, because I got the help, I taught him how to pipe weld. He runs a company, uh, his own pipe outfit. Went to work for the airport. In San Francisco, a competitive market and an extremely expensive venture to start a welding fabrication company in San Francisco. Oh, wow. And he's to this day, every year or every other year, it's getting longer, it's getting further apart as we get older, but mm-hmm. he keeps in touch. And he asked me how I'm doing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And um, I've had a couple, that was my first experience getting to teach someone how to weld. Hmm. It was really rewarding. And then when I became a professor in in uh, Kissimmee, Florida, or Kissimmee is near Orlando, mm-hmm. and um, at a junior, like a trade school, mm-hmm. and man, now I have even more people that reach out and continue to reach out and comment on, it helps with social media, but, you know, it's really cool, and I really want to become a teacher again. Mm-hmm. Through, for the union but i love it's super rewarding to have that oh yeah um like the you're impacting lives and you get to see it directly like mm-hmm. it's cool to build buildings it's cool to probably work on trucks yeah but when you build someone a custom car oh yeah isn't that way more rewarding yeah. you can then you get to see them smile as they yeah like that's that's how i feel and maybe i learned that from you i don't know but when we built that Mustang for that guy, we, oh, you yeah. built it, I hung around. But I Test felt part, man. yeah, I felt like I was a part of it. I was there for the process. Yeah. But, um, like, it's so <clears throat> cool to see people just go crazy over the thing that they love the most that you helped them get. Mm-hmm. And it was something like, you know, when I built the Star Wars theme park, that was kind of like that. I've seen some friends of mine that I don't even know I built it. I just see it on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, man, I got the help. I put that smile yeah. on their face. Yeah. Like, that's cool. Yeah. And that's that's what makes me excited, like, to know, like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but. That's cool. The, uh. Yeah, so where were we talking about before that? Your mechanic competitions, Mm -hmm. and then, so, oh, I remember. Get back to your car, because this car has been in my life since I was weeks old, and a little cheat code to put me to sleep, as I have been told. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, When did you, how did that conversation go with your dad? Was it a car that he had? No. Scrapped? He knew Was the it guy someone that, that you knew? Actually owned the car. How old were you? Did you say, uh, Dad, I wanna I wanna I don't wanna go get a Dodge or a Honda or I wanna build my first car. Yeah. What, did you have a car before be, that? No, I had a my first car was an old Datsun 
Oh, uh, the two forty. No, it was a B two ten. B. Oh, that was a truck, right? The Dodson. Uh, the, it was a car hatchback, mm. but it had a. I like the so Dodson. My dad 540s. knew a guy that had the car, but it was just a shell. Okay. So we went I down to pick it up. I think you showed me a picture. Yeah. And Do you have a picture? I Pretty don't think so. I don't know. It had no rear end, right? No rear end, no interior, no engine, no transmission. Just then, a shell. Uh, he knew the guy, and we were going to actually get it for my dad to put together. <laughs> we get it home, and he's like, no, nah, this is too much work. If you want a project, go ahead and take it. So oh, wow. I went and got a rear end for it, put it in there, then started buying the pieces for it. and. That's cool. Gave together. you the freedom to just hey, yeah. Here is this so is for you. I did a bunch of work to it and everything, uh-huh. and we put just with his supervision. Yeah, or, yeah. We put an engine in it and uh, mocked up a tranny and all that stuff. And what was it like? So this is so you know I have the privilege of being your guys's generate the generation oh, after yeah. people like you, who you were first gen classic car guy, mm-hmm. so. You were building shit from scratch, mm-hmm. motor mounts. I didn't even know that was possible. I just assume you buy them. Yeah. Because I can just go online, go to classiccars.com or whatever the website. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the website, but I used it a lot for the Dart. And just be like, oh, yeah, motor mounts, boom. Yeah. New ones, brand yeah. new, factory made for a classic car. Yeah. So when you had to do that, you you had a real undertaking it yeah, wasn't like, oh, the, let me just go online and find what I need. Let me go find the manual. What's the numbers matching? Oh, here's the schematic. Yeah. What was that? That was kind parts of... Parts weren't... Those engines weren't really in those cars, so you had to actually make the parts to put yeah. it in those cars. And how do you know, like, would the tranny fit, would the, uh, would the just housing... Just mocking everything up. And it, we'd have to put the engine in further forward, put the engine in back, put it in forward, you know, just mocking everything up. That's so cool. we bolt the engine and transmission together, and then bolt the drop it onto it. Or would you slide it in? Slide it in. Wow! And then um, the training mounts, the stock training mount. So then once the engine and everything got in there, then we had them notch this. And notch so you that. had a baseline. So you knew, okay, yeah, this with this bigger block, it's longer. So this training mount, this is where our start. So if you needed your motor mounts, had to move based off where you placed this. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I was wondering about that. I didn't know. But, you know, you got to clear the steering, got to right. clear the starter, got to do this, got to do that. And so, then was it fully built or did you build it as you got older? Because I know nah, that you had to like, the headers was a big problem you've yeah, talked about no, in the past. I, I built it as time went on. Okay. So I, when you ran into these problems, like, that sucks. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, was it something you measured first and figured out? Or was it like, oh, I got these new headers, and you're like, shit. No, that was a three-week process, putting those on. <laughs> three so, weeks? Yeah. Oh, no. Because the torsion bars go through the headers, so you have to take the suspension Wait, off. Wait, what? Yeah. They go through the headers? Mm-hmm. So you can't even take the headers, the engine no. out without uh, pulling I'd the... I'd have to lay them off to the side and then pull the engine. So you, wow. So you yeah. can't pull the headers out. You'd have no. to take apart the suspension. Yep. Whoa! I had no yeah. idea. Yeah, it's it's a process because <laughs> those engines weren't designed to run on those cars. Yeah, but they sure fucking make the yeah. car move. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. that's cool. How long did that total? So not to get to where it is now, uh, but how long till you were able to drive it, it and license probably, it? Probably a year. Okay, so this is a real passion project. Yeah. You were committed, situated. And then were you working to get, obviously, to buy parts? Yeah. Right? So what were you doing? How old were you? You're still mm, in high school? I was just out of high school when I started building the engine for okay. it. The big in, the engine I got. So did that have a lot? Oh, you had a different motor. Mm-hmm. It had oh. a 440 in it, but it was a, one out of a stock. It was a blue one, Tuna huh? boat one, yeah. Yeah, I remember. So and then I found a 68 440, and then we built it. So what's the difference? Because the block's crank. the same... So the older ones have steel cranks. You can build more horsepower and torque with them. So the one you have is older, or the one you yeah, had? Yeah, the one I have is older. So what was with the one you had? Uh, we took that out, and was it? Well, I, mean, just, um, I don't know enough about cars. So what's the difference between that uh, engine? One had a cast crank, and the old the oh, newer oh, oh. one had a so cast newer cast okay. crank, and the older one has a steel crank. Okay, so so way more durable. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and more desirable. I was, 
I was only imagining aluminum or steel. No, and I was like, well, aluminum seems better. The heads are different. Okay. Because they're the car. The so your first compression engine. is different and yeah. everything. First engine okay. was a smog engine. You know, it came oh, out of the wow. uh, 75 Imperial. When did they start smog? Like 74, uh, right? 73, 74 yeah. started getting heavily into smog. Interesting. <clears throat> that's uh that's interesting i never really and you know that's way beyond my time so i don't so you were there when fog got there's fog smog got initiated yeah wow yeah dang yeah that's crazy that did it affect stuff. classics or were they grandfathered mm, in like they, they were are grandfathered now? in so they were to a certain point when i first had old, my car right because your car is not old in 73 that's only five years, not even five years old. No. So they, like, let it be then. Yeah. Wow. Way more lax, because now it's got to be, like, 20 years. I had years, the smog right? at one time. Oh, really? And then after that, they changed the law to where you it had to be uh, 75 and newer. Oh, that's cool. Oh, so smog. when that law came into effect, my essentially car when off. it was fully in effect, that's yeah, when they... the car dropped off of it. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah. Because it's not smog legal. That law is still in effect, right? 75 yeah. and yeah. older? Yeah. Some have that age for permanent plates. That's kind of like Montana. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. I think you can get permanents here in, or in uh, Oregon across the river. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. I don't know the age, but I know you can. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's nice. You can't do that in California, no. can you? They want their money. Yep. Give me that money. Yeah, every year. You like to drive on this road? Yeah. I want that money. Every stinking year. It goes up, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. <clears throat> uh, it's nice not living in California. Mm. I tell you what, it sure is. That's why it's like, I want to move. <laughs> yeah. It's getting worse every day. Yeah. The new, uh, what happens with this new, um, ah, I'll ask you that in a minute. We'll get back to California. So you got your car. Um, so you got your car. You're out of high school. You got a new motor in it. Mm-hmm. You got it mocked up. It all fits. Mm-hmm. What? Where do you take it? The first drive? Do you just do it down the road and back? Yeah, just so, break it in. So once you had it, like when you were going out to show it off, hey, look what I got. Mm-hmm. Where? What'd you? Where'd you go? With, what'd you do? They had a cruise up in Reading. Was it the hot August, uh, cool April? Or? They had that, and then every weekend when I was younger, they you could go cruise your car around without getting in trouble. That's cool. Yeah. No, I know Not that. Now, uh, though. I know that you got in trouble once or oh, twice, yeah. or almost got in trouble. Oh, what yeah. are, tell tell us some of those stories, because <laughs> that's dead. That yeah. was dead long before I was alive. That was not yeah something that was. <laughs> oh yeah, going to Clear Creek, getting tickets, doing burnouts in the middle of town, <laughs> downtown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's... good old days. Now you can't do it. <clears throat> I uh, I never told you this, but. I got pulled over in your car. Uh, so, for those that don't know, and I correct me if I'm wrong, but to my recollection, the rule was, so this car has been in my life since I was a kid. Ran when I was a kid, quit running. My mom said, you either park it or sell it because of your tickets, mm-hmm. right? Something like that. Yeah. Parked it. And then I become of age to drive. And it's kind of the same story, but... The car was already his, but it's been sitting, so I was, I'm not a mechanic. I'm going to restore it, make it look pretty, get the interior, find some seats, because you had it gutted and stripped for mm-hmm. racing. And um, <clears throat> we did have to get it mechanically sound. But um, so I'm driving it. And the rule, I think the rule was, if you can do a year without tickets in in my Old and you know just normal driving. Yeah. Then you'll be able to drive the car. Am I wrong? Is that? Yeah, I think it's something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. And uh, pulled it off, and shortly after, I think that's why you said it because shortly after I got pulled over, yeah. and I had got, uh, I only got away with, uh, got away with it because he knew our small town, hmm. but I didn't break any laws except for breaking traction. And oh. I said I didn't know there was the a law speed. against. I didn't. I. And I was very not cocky or anything. It's the first time I've ever been pulled over. Yeah. But I was like, I didn't know there was a law against accelerating. And he goes, well, technically there's not. But I heard your t- tires squealing in mm-hmm. the in the in at the four-way stop on Walnut. Yeah. I drug that to the 
speed limit, which was probably ended up probably doing fifty instead of thirty. Yeah. But I pulled off the line. I just let off uh, probably at the first. You know, I wasn't dragging strip, but I was accelerating fast, and so he couldn't get me for speeding, but. He pulls in. So, you know, there's that guy that does roll cages and stuff down the way. Oh. And I was pulling in yeah. to get a quote because I was mocking up my roll cage I was going to build. Mm. And I needed his mandrel bender. So, I mm. pull in and the cop pulls in. He's in a fucking Ford Excursion, green, like Uncle Randy's, mm. fully lighted, full, like in the headlights before when LEDs were new. Like before, oh, you didn't yeah. even know they had them. That's how new. You're yeah. like, what kind of lights? It's in the dash. What yeah. you? He had, you know, the where the mirror is. That was an LED, uh, black and red, oh, okay. or uh, blue and red. blue and red. It was in the blinkers. It was in the fog lights. And so this oh, excursion wow. pulls up behind me with murdered out windows, and it's a cop. Hmm. He's undercover. That's weird. So I merely must have... I didn't burn rubber, though. I just chirped, you know, it's uh, drag radials, so, so they didn't stick well. Yeah. We just put those on, I think, Yeah. and they were just... And you had the slicks on, the street mm. slicks, so they stuck better, and I wasn't... And so, long story short, he gets out, and you always said, like, I think I got pulled over a lot just so they could hear the car, and um, <laughs> he says that. He's like, I said, oh. well, because I say what I said, I said, I didn't know it was illegal to accelerate. Right? It's yeah. not. There's no law on that. No. So I was smart enough to say that. Yeah. <laughs> not going to admit to any speed, oh, but yeah. I was accelerating, okay, officer? And I was already out of the car because I was getting out to talk to the guy. So we're just talking. And um, I go, well, he says, well, you broke traction. You burned out. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't burn out. <laughs> I didn't burn out. And I got a little worried now because I'm like, what? He's like, because he goes in, like, exhibition of speed and da 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 and reckless endangerment, not going to impound your car. And I was like, oh, hey, hey, hey. Hey, man, like, I didn't hear anything. This car is so loud, I can't hear yeah. anything. And yeah. guess what his next thing? Well, hey, hey, you want to start up for me? Oh, really? <laughs> nice. Yeah. And he goes, well, you, you want to start it up for me? And mm. I start it up and, you know, <laughs> that would hold it like three grand for him. For him. Like, what? Huh? Huh? Nice. He's like, all right. He gives me, he's got to give me the neck, like, kill it, kill it. And he's like, starts naming you, naming mom, naming Brittany. His daughter was Allison uh, on the Derryville basketball team or something. Oh, really? And a little blonde girl, I remember. I don't know her last name. But he, anyways, he knew us. Oh, and he's geez. like, so he scared the shit out of me. Yeah. And I never, it was the first and only time I fucked around at all. That wasn't like on Red Bank Road where I knew I was going to test the engine. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it scared the shit out of me. That's funny. And uh, then he's like, well, I know your family. I can't do this to your family, so I'm going to let you go. Nice. But I was like, that's why Dad said I can't get a ticket. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty much. It's so easy, though. Like, I just accelerate, and that car burn rubber. Mm -hmm. You know, you just look at the, bat, the pedal. Oh, yeah. And that's just some... I just still... Yeah. I know why you didn't want me to drive it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and your mom, mom's like, no. Dangerous in the wrong hands. Yeah, luckily, um, you know, and honestly, luckily, he pulled me over. Or might not be here. That car might not exist. I think you got to go over one, and we'll put these together. Oh. But, yeah. Yes. How many of those close calls did you have? Uh... I I think you recall I recall you tell me a, some sort of story with a helicopter, maybe uh, some sort of car chase. Yeah, I ran something the cops like a couple times. <laughs> Just once or twice. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's tempting when you got that kind of power. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I shouldn't have done it, but yeah, you only way. live once, right? Yeah. What? Well, how old were you when that all that time of your life? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Looking for the other. It was one. in my early twenties. So, were you with mom yet, or were you still no. running wild? No. Now, when you met mom, was it something that you were like looking to settle down, or was no. it just? So, when I met my wife, I, I was literally working out, just moved here, not trying to find nobody. I just knew to Florida, mm -hmm. and she just approached, and I still didn't even want to date her when I yeah. when I was dating her. And I was like, why am I doing this? Like, I just, 
Yeah. And the next thing you know, she just kind of grew on me, and then, then you mm-hmm. know, that's all she wrote, happily ever after. Yeah. Um, because when I hear mom's side of the story, she didn't want to meet this guy. She's oh, like, ah. Yeah. I just got the new baby, yeah. right? And not in the market. And then um, she said, Auntie kind of hooked you guys up. Yeah. How, what What was that like on your side? I've only heard her side of that story. Uh, I knew your aunt first before I knew your mom. Really? Mm-hmm. So was it Boyd? Uncle Boyd? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, she was going to hook us up. And then... I don't know. I don't know what happened after that, and then, but I wasn't looking to settle down or nothing. But it all seemed to work out, right? That's it's always um, it's always Let's when you go. least expect it. So that'll go on these two right here, but flat out, yeah, just like that. It's always um, every time I try and find someone in the past. I was like, try and try, and it never works. And mm-hmm. I think I did that wrong, Dad. I, yeah, we've got to turn it oh. 180, sorry. And then as soon as you quit looking and quit trying, everything that you need falls in your lap. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So you're, so we get into, now you're in your 20s. Now, so now, when? how old are you when you met Mom? Mm, 25 24 oh, okay 25. so kind of around my age then yeah so you were get, you were getting mature yeah getting out of the reckless but still oh, yeah. doing fun shit and yeah young enough to be wild but old enough to learn to settle down yeah type of deal um what how did that go like did you just kept hanging out and then one day you're like you know what this is the deal or i know you guys end up what, did you go down the path, or did you get... I know she was pregnant when during the marriage. That's how I did it. I was like, let's get... I would rather have the baby, and then we can get married. But that's kind of something I planned. I'm assuming yeah. that didn't come planned. No. Yeah. No, it's... Um, we ended up... We found out she was pregnant and then got married shortly thereafter that. What was that like? Like, uh, were was, you scared? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was stressful. Two kids. Yeah. And now, like, so now you're dating a girl with a kid, but now you're going to marry a woman with another kid? Yeah. Like, so, to me, the way I see that, because I know I'm, it's not the first time I experienced this situation, it was, you know, you run into enough yeah. people, I always wondered, like, because you're committed to her, right, with mm-hmm. me, until you're married, now I'm yours. Yeah. So at first it was like, oh, this girl has a kid, but she's cool. Yeah. And then so not only are you faced with your own reality of your new child mm-hmm. on the way and providing, but you now have like, with one birth, you've adopted, now you have two kids oh, yeah. with one birth. It's like having twins. Yeah. But one's already big enough to be annoying. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. was that like? Because that's uh, um, stressful. That's another level of commitment <clears throat> that you probably couldn't even have imagined because no. every man just thinks like, well, At least for me, two little kids too. Right, and like yeah. if you make that mistake or that accident happens or whatever you want to call it, you're only mm-hmm. thinking, okay, I have one kid and one woman. Yeah. But if you're in that situation now, now it might not have hit you. Did that something that hit you? La- was that delayed? Mm, somewhat. Yeah. yeah. Because it was like, oh, I don't make enough money. I don't have this. I don't have that. And, right. You know. Typical everyday stress. Yep, but it comes in quick when you. Yeah. <laughs> the numbers add up yeah, fast. Yeah, because you're responsible for yeah. a bunch of people. Yep, and even like, um, I mean, I experienced it. That's why I wanted to ask because I've experienced it a little bit, and I was prepared, prepared as anybody could be. Like, yeah. I had the career, I did the school, I yeah. had my life together yeah. somewhat as much as you can, and yeah. uh, but I still was living a single man's life. And yeah. that's just different. Even even having Alexa, you know, being her, a girlfriend, mm-hmm. it's different. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm support a little more than I did that we lived together, but I still wasn't provider. Yeah. And, like, just that change and then the baby on top. And it's like there was things that I had that were perfectly comfortable and I could have a, not to say extravagant, but I could have a comfortable life with a couple toys or just spend money here and there. 
mm-hmm. that quickly goes gone. Yep. And then what you thought was money isn't really money. Yeah. You're like, that's not enough. That's Trump change. Like, I need yeah. to do more. And uh, it just came in quick, and I was ready for it. So I just couldn't imagine that with your own child, plus throw another one on top. Yeah, it was hard. You know, <laughs> what money, are those? money was always an issue. But was that, um, what was that like when you first found out? Because, I mean, as you and I both know, when Mark found out, that didn't go that way. Yeah. You went the other way. Yeah. And that clearly wasn't your decision. Yeah. You went you fell into the hole. You went into the family and provided and Yeah. Was there ever like a flight fight or flight instinct? Like did you ever have and I, and for those that don't know, there was a separation between you two. Was there ever a time where you just kind of wanted to wipe your hands of it or uh no. I can't imagine that was easy. No. Yeah. No, it uh, I don't know. Maybe we both thought it for a little bit, but other than that, no, it wasn't like, oh, I want out of here. It was like, well, you know. Figure it out. Figure it out and get it. Let's get it over with, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's cool. No, I, that's one of the best quality. I told Alexa the other day, your best quality is your loyalty yeah. over anything, even when it hurts you. And that's in the, you know, with your family and this and that, but uh, we've always, Brittany and I, we've always seen that. Yeah. Even to your own detriment, and you don't talk about it. Just yeah. like at work, when you say you don't, you just keep your mouth shut, like, yeah. loyal to a fault, to the company, to the yeah. to the family that's hurting you, to whoever it is, yeah. I'm there, and um, I think that's a very high value that most people don't actually recognize. Yeah. And that's something that, um, oh, was yeah. that come from, from naturally or is that something your parents instilled in you Mm, probably yeah probably probably my parents you know but you know you got to do the right thing right you know yeah and that's uh i just want to make sure like because that's it's a strong moral you know to have that and i just i have a daughter now and i don't know just like i want to do better than you guys you guys did great but there's everyone makes mistakes oh yeah and I want to do better, but there's a lot of good things that you didn't even do. You just showed through your actions. Yeah. And yeah. I just want to instill that. Yeah. And it's really the things, like growing up, you see the things that you think are, uh, but then you become older even before fatherhood. Mm-hmm. And there's just things you recognize, you know, as a man that's got to make money or oh, it's, yeah. I can only know a man's perspective, but yeah. I have Brittany on sometime and ask her, but it, to see that. Like, just the fact, like, I hated going to work on cars with you. I absolutely hated it. You don't fucking talk. No. This is the most you ever talked to me <laughs> that wasn't about some car. Yeah. And um, that's kind of why I was like, I'm going to get him pinned on this podcast and he won't be able to run. And <laughs> but I would, hey, I was just cry to mom, mom, please don't make me go. I don't want to go. It's no, hot. Yeah. He won't talk to me. He won't teach me how to work on cars. <laughs> like, and I now, you know, I understand, like, you were working. You were stressed. There was things. It's hot. Yeah. You're trying. You need that money. You know. Yeah. And uh, you build it for this many hours, and it might have been taking longer. So you really got to hurry or whatever mm-hmm. it was. And uh, you know, it wasn't the hobby car that you had in yeah. the garage that you could take all the time oh, in the yeah. world to show me. And that's kind of how I looked at it at first. Like, why didn't he teach me this? Why? Like, I don't know. I should know more. And then when I got older, I was like, oh, that wasn't the lesson. The lesson was just learning what how, what it takes to really provide. Oh yeah, and it take the it wasn't what it takes. There's people that could do more with less hours, but it was yeah. the fact that if this is what I'm given, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to find a way to do better. Yeah, I'm going to find another avenue. I'm going to work as much as it takes. I'm not satisfied here, and I'm not going to bitch to them because I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to go over here and figure out how to make money yeah. that they can't pay me. Yeah, and um. That kind of came after a couple losses, a couple, you know. No, oh, yeah. I always learned, I always saw the work ethic, but I never really understood the fact, and maybe even till now, till we talked about it, the fact that you just, you know, there's always someone at Walmart had a very short ceiling mm-hmm. as far as like the grand scheme of things. And uh, I could see that, like, your friend, Bill, mm-hmm. he started his own business and was yeah. flourishing. Yeah. But you, I asked you before, like, why didn't you do that? 
But there was a lot of now the side job becomes real job, and then that yeah. stress becomes tenfold. Yeah, and when that because when you don't have a side job for three, two, three months, and yeah. it's once in a while, and then you have ten, mm-hmm. and you knew some, you knew, and you told me that it's not. I can't rely on that. I mm-hmm. can't rely on this. I need that something that's always coming. Yeah. And now I'm a dad. Well, and benefits and all that stuff. Yeah, especially with mom and with kids. And now that I even, like, I have a field like that where it's unreliable. And I'm my job, just like you, work yourself out of a job. If you were strictly a side job mechanic that had his own shop, every day you're working out of a job. Every day you don't know when the next car is coming. And that's a crazy amount of stress. And, like, just... Uh, pull your microphone up a little bit, just for yeah, that's good. Okay, um, hitting your shoulder. Um, I experienced that like anxiety of like I need to. Oh, I gotta. Oh man, I gotta when when and, that, and I'll just know it comes weeks before, and I know the job's just you get a feeling like it's starting to wind down. Things are starting to shift in the climate, and hmm. people are gonna get laid off. And it's not yeah. like they're hiding it; it's coming to an end. Yeah, and yeah. you just. A couple of weeks before, though, my whole, I'm like tense. I'm like, oh, man, because there's that uncertainty. And it always, I mean, I'm in the union, so it's never more than a week or two that I'm out of work. Yeah. But it, just knowing, like, oh, I want I want a year-long co- contract. I want a big job. I want to get on a nine-month job. Oh, yeah. I want to get something that's just long-term that I don't have to think about that. Because I'm not my own boss, but I really am. Like, my job is to work out of a contract and if I want to leave, I can, but that's stupid. But yeah. if the contract's two months and you take the call, you're working for yourself for two months. Yeah. Like it's when you take the call, you're doing it. Yeah. And so I could deny it and be out of work for a couple more weeks and gamble on the fact that I can get the bigger call. But if I took yeah. that call and I can't get jealous at the man that got the call I want, it's just the way the dice will dice yeah. rolled, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I just I fig I wondered I don't know. We talked about that when I was younger, and I was wondering, like, because Bill was always working on the coolest shit and doing, so oh, are you, yeah. but he was doing it for a living. Yeah. Like, that was all he ever did yeah. was drag cars, and then his, you know, his garage, he had the lift and all the stuff that I knew you could use. I was like, man. Oh, yeah. They had a nice, he no, has he a nice garage. Nice setup. Yep. And yeah. now, I mean, you got, you get, you, yeah. over time, there's a two paths. There's the tortoise and the hare. You more the tortoise. Yeah. The tortoise has the knowledge, the wisdom. Just keep pushing. Yeah. You know, just keep pushing down oh, this yeah. path. Yeah. And um, for someone that doesn't talk much, you sure learn a lot from you. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Oh, I have. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> what are we looking for here? A couple of these. Probably won't finish this, but that's fine. I really enjoyed talking to you this time uh, on the podcast. Thanks for doing it. Let's see. What, do you just wrap it up some other time? No, we we can keep going. I'm not in a hurry. I mean, there's no time limit. We can finish this one. I just don't think we'll get to all of them. Um, What? uh, So, I... I asked you, but we kind of got sidetracked on your first one. Like, what are your five five moments? It can be five cars you built or rebuilt, or you said one of them was was uh, your yeah. competition. So, how yeah. did you do? Because just saying that, I know you never won one, right? You never no. won, won nationals, but you did good. In uh, how? What was the best you did? I. Th- what did I get? Like I know you were in like top five once or like yeah, fourth. I, I think was, you placed a fourth and then a couple sixth. I think always top ten, like I'm pretty that. sure. I, I know you got a couple in the like eleventh, top fifteen. You were always top fifteen, but I knew I think you got like fourth place once. I can't remember. Yeah, there was I think once. And then That's the impressive. rest of them were higher. Oh really? Yeah. So you did place in the top they well, I mean lower. Sorry, oh, I was like, oh, yeah, that's impressive. Of the nation, of nation nationwide, diesel mechanics that work on trucks. That's yeah. cr- the that fact that you can even be in a competition is so cool. Oh yeah, and to be able like to say that I'm one of the best mechanics, and the fact that you don't say that is really says a lot about you. Yeah, because it doesn't have to be said. Your work shows it. Nah, it was fun. I had a good time doing it. 
So what else are uh, some other highlights of your career? Mm. And I'm assuming most of these will be like side job type. Yeah. And then, you know, I got a good 401k going on. Now I have a job that is I'm going to get a pension when I retire. And then if I stay there long enough, I'll get lifetime medical benefits. Whoa, that's a cool one. Yeah. Not even my union has that. Yeah, so it it does good. What about like, um, is there any cars that you've built that really stand out to you? That's um, kind of what I was leaning on. I think the, we got to turn those. That's the wrong color. We'll go with the black one. And they go the opposite direction. Sorry. Probably the, the uh, pest control guy's uh, Mustang. That was really sick. One of them. My car. You know. Um, Did you work on some of your dad's with him? Uh, those cars were already put together when I was around. Did he build them or did he buy them? He built them. That's cool. Yeah. Your car is really the best. Yeah. That he, Mustang was really cool, though. Yeah, no, that was fun. You did a couple cooler, newer, but cooler trucks, too, right? We got something backwards here. Really? Don't we? No. Uh-uh. No, that's right. What? What is this piece? Oh, shit. Yeah, we're missing that. Sorry. Not backwards, just missing. Yep. I, um... What about that old dude's Ford? That was a it was a clean truck. It was not old old. It was like like a nineties. I don't remember, remember that, that one. F one fifty, the white and blue. Oh yeah. That was a clean truck. Yeah. I like that truck. Do you remember that um you remember the Swather? I was just talking about this the other oh, day. Oh yeah. Blue hole. Tell me, um tell me about that. What was that like? You ever seen that? In person before oh, yeah. before that day, yeah, you had mm -hmm. you seen blocks do that? Oh yeah, what people if you don't listen to you and then they <laughs> run it when they're not supposed to, <laughs> then it blows a hole in it. Oh god, like I said, it. Uh, really? When you make that mistake, it fucking hurts. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh right there. Yep, on the black ones. That's painful. Yeah, that sucks, dude. A hole yeah, in your expensive, engine. Yeah. Expensive mistake. Because you can't even rebuild it at no. that point. You're completely Once you got a scrapped. hole in it, it's done. Now, what happens to make that happen? Is it just no oil and friction? Or is it uh, too much compression? No, loss of oil. So so it's just friction. And then yeah. it heats and boom. And then if you already got an issue uh, and it's knocking... You shouldn't uh, do it oh, like, anyway. Hey, like you're, uh, you lost the truck to the oil pressure, didn't you? Yeah. How'd that make you feel? <laughs> Thanks to the machine shop guy. <laughs> no, no, the other one. You've lost two trucks to the oil pressure. Shit. I didn't even think about that. Your white one. Oh, yeah, the oil pump went bad. Yeah. Mom yeah. just like, get to the bucket. Just keep yeah. going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And she knows, and you're a mechanic. She's like, nah, just drive it. We got to get there. Yeah, the oil pump went bad, and then this one here, the machine shop guy put the wrong freeze plug in it for me. Yeah, that's always fun. How do you keep a guy accountable for that? What do you do? Can't. There's nothing you can do? He's out of business now. Oh, wow. I had a guy, I had luckily had a one-year warranty, and I had to take my, my transfer case back twice. Hmm. Yeah, it kept leaking on the rear. Oh, really? Yeah, the rear seal. It was weird. It just seep. And it was always after I used it. And it'd be good until I used it. And I used it, and it started dripping. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, dude. And it'd be about nine months later till winter hit again. And yeah. then, like, yeah. Call him up. And he lived in Eugene, and I'm in fucking Portland. I gotta drive three, two and a half hours all the way down there, drop it off, get a ride back. Fuck it. Yeah. Ugh. Fucking warranty work on... I'm just tired of... It's like cars suck. Need an older car. Yeah. Yep. I really want an old truck. Like yeah. an old, like uh, first gen, like a 7.3, like the old, old, or even an old first gen Cummins is pretty sick. Yeah. Those are cool. I yeah. saw one that was stock, stock height, two wheel drive. Just and you had can that make nice them nice. Sound. Yeah. You can make them real nice. Yep. <clears throat> That'd be cool. That would be a perfect. I don't want to 
I don't need a fancy truck. I did the nice truck. I had my dream truck, right? The blue one was everything at every high school. I went the big lifted truck and mm-hmm. got that. And it was great. But I ended up putting like eight grand in fucking work in a year and a oh, half. That was yeah. so much. I had to get out. It hurt. I just had to get rid of it. Yeah. And they paid me more than I paid. So I got out of that. And I got the new truck. And even that was like, you know, the luxury of that. But you can get a car that... What I realized was Alexa's car, which is a 08, mm-hmm. has everything that they say is fancy and new in that truck. They're just ripping you off. Yeah. Hers has cooled seats, heated seats, blind yeah. spots, all the shit, and it's 12 years old. Yeah. And they're saying theirs is new. Yeah. Fucking out of here. Yeah. Come it's, on, dude. You're just revamping some old tech. Yeah. Like, get out of that here. shit for a long time. Yeah, and they act like it was the shit. So, between that and the recalls, obviously. And it was really hard to get rid of that U.S.-made stamp. It didn't feel good. But... Yeah. Um, I would like to... Now, and I, why I got rid of it was I realized <clears throat> I thought I needed it, right? But as you can tell, I don't move that much. No. I've been six months, like, on par, and now we'll be here for years... Push that down a little. Something's going on here. Why is that low? There we go. And I've been here for years now. Or, I mean, I will be here for years. This is a permanent location. And out of the six or seven times I hauled my truck, or I hauled my trailer, I only used my truck three times. Yeah. So I was like, one was the blue and two with the gray. I'm like, dude, I'm paying all this money for this truck. I never used the fuel, the oil change. The fucking oh, yeah. fuel filters were 300 bucks. Yeah. And you can't do both of them, no. not here in RV park. No. And really, you can't work on anything in most RV parks. No. And so it was just like, I just need an old truck that's mm-hmm. reliable. It can be, that I need airbags. I need yeah. to be able to, this fucking truck, this trailer. I really need like Papa's. Oh, yeah. Like a 97 Cummins or something. Yeah. Can I have miles? I'm only driving a little bit. And yeah. then something that's cheap that I can park. Yeah. And I can take it off. It I can yourself. do a non-op. I can yeah. leave it there. Yeah, fix it. Yeah. Can find what's on the engine. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And then, what? So I had a fuel injector blow on my 06. It's a common rail. Mm-hmm. Like yours. Mm-hmm. You had one warp your head, right? Or warp your piston. It so, melted my piston. So what happened there? The injector broke. So the injector broke. Yeah. So I had my line broke. So the same amount of pressure I had coming out of the line, you mm-hmm. had going directly into your piston. Yeah. Because I drained a ha- uh, half a tank. I yeah. drained like a half a tank in 10 miles. I went yeah, down the highway, mine, and it just went... Yeah. Mine melted a hole. And anytime it fires on the wrong deal or drips fuel in there when it's not supposed to, it freaking uh, will melt the piston. It looked like a wave. So is that melting the piston, or is it no, water... Melted. Really? Mm. Yeah. That, so that so it should have been to the high side and it warped it yeah. melted down. Ate half the piston off. Wow. Yeah. That's a it so was and that's with diesel, right? Because diesel yeah. doesn't have the amount of heat that the engine the gasoline does, right? It's like the a lower combustion got heat, but it it takes a while to burn it. But oh. once you get it to burn, so it holds the heat. Then it's like a blowtorch. Oh, okay. Uh, with as much pressure going in these new injectors. They'll, it'll melt a hole right in the piston. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. What, um, so, so you got the Mustang, your job, which mm. is very, um, commendable. Yeah. And it did lead to a prize career in, with the Caltrans and everything. Yeah. So those are three. Now, I'm going to assume your family is something yeah. you're very proud of. Yeah. Would it be the, essentially you homesteaded that land? Would that be on the list? Uh, Your little farm you got there? Yeah, it's. I'm. I'm. I'm glad we got it. It's nice. I. It'd be hard to move because, you know, we got the house, pipe fencing, freaking barn. And you did it all yourself. Wash, yeah, wash rack. Got a hay storage now. I got a motorhome barn. Motor shop. Home, got a shop. Got an arena, got a round pin. And a garage, and a which garage. was already part of the house. Yeah. Now your lawn's huge. Yeah. We which you started probably, a decade ago or more. 
8,000 square feet of grass. Fuck, that's a lot, dude. Yeah. So, no, it's, I, it'd be hard to get and it And 20 up. acres, you know, it's on 20 25 acres. acres. And yeah. a mobile home you put up and built, second yeah. one you did. You want to tell that story? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll share it when he's not on. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Hey, everyone has their failures, you know. <laughs> I don't know the full story. I was a kid. I just know... I just know you, mom said you were supposed to do something and you didn't. Yeah. Because I listened to her grandpa. <laughs> Which seems like you should. Yeah. So, um, when you look at that, when you sit out, when you know, when you're at home and you look at that, like, is that is that gratifying? Like, you did that. Oh, yeah. You did that. Yeah. Did you ever think in your life you'd do, you'd no. fucking even live on a horse farm? and No. Right? Yeah. Fucking, you've got two houses on it. You got all those building like yeah. you, you homesteaded a piece of land that had nothing yeah you got pont redwoods eight thousand yeah. square feet of grass that's a lot of grass oh yeah like it's a lot of work but it's also kind of like yeah looking back over your how you're in your your 50 sorry uh 51. you were born in 74 yeah 71 70, 71 mom was 74 yeah yeah so you're 54 mm-hmm. no Fi- i'm 51 51 yeah so, sorry and um, I should have known that. So you're 51. Over your 51 years, did would you what when you were young? Where did you think you'd be at 51? Did you even think that far? No, <laughs> it seemed like it was forever away. Yeah, it. it yeah, yeah, it does. Still seem like that. Not for even me. sure if I was supposed to be alive. That I relate to a lot, and um, I kind of. Probably more than I thought I was when I was doing it, but I pretty much followed in your reckless footsteps as a kid, like <laughs> motorcycle, you know. Yeah. Fucking trouble with the law, running from cops, doing yeah. stupid shit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a point during that that just fucking by the skin of your pants era that you're like, I don't, I'm not gonna make it to 27. Like yeah. I'm not gonna make it to oh, 25. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. Then you do, and you're like, "What the fuck am I? Do- what? Uh, what do I do now?" Yeah. Shit. There's bills. Like, fuck. <sighs> yeah. Oh, well, I made it this far. <laughs> I thought I wouldn't have to pay these because I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Yeah. That's a um, weird. It's oh, a weird yeah. feeling. What is it like being a grandpa? You, you personally, I'll tell. Let me tell you what it's like. Seeing you as a grandpa is fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> You are totally different than you were as a father. Um, not that, in like, a, like an, an exp- well, first of all, you didn't really hold us, is what mom no. said. You were, you were kind of like, oh, shit, scared yeah. kids. Oh, my, oh my yeah. God, what is this alien? Yeah. And um, now, I mean, you still kind of were like that the first time I gave her to you, but I gave her to you, and you now you're all over that girl. Yeah. You love that girl. No, it's What's, uh different. Yeah. I don't know, probably because there's no stress. It's not, yeah. Yeah, it's like your grandpa. Go, there you go. She's yours. <laughs> That's cool. Feed yeah. her candy and Mountain Dew and send her home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just don't tell your dad. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. It, it's pretty cool to see. Um, you, you don't smile a lot unless someone's talking about cars. Oh, and, yeah. uh <laughs> it's cool. It's cool to see you with that baby and she's making you smile and Yeah. She's cute. You're very yeah, you're very interactive as a grandpa. <clears throat> and I love it. It's awesome. What do we got over here? I don't know. So we got these two these are some new pieces here. You remember your space set? I don't I never saw it put together, but you had a spaceman Lego. They're actually really collectible now. And um I have the minifigures. They're so big deal that they redid it. They re they oh, really? re came out with them, reintroduced them. I as don't the, remember my Legos that much. They so you have these space guys. I'll show you later. I should have got them out because they're yours, but they're in the bedroom. They're really cool. You had a blue one, a white one. You had two blue ones, a white one and a red one. I think you had a yellow one, but I couldn't find the rest of him. Hmm. And you know they're worth like thirty, forty bucks a piece. Are one they? was worth like fifty. Oh, um, wow. For the 90 year anniversary, they came out with them again. In a oh, new, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like one of their iconic, like, that's kind of one of the sets that made Lego. And, um, hmm. yeah. I, I, cause I had generic Legos. I didn't have anything like this. Right. 
Because yeah. your guys, is, the Legos now are unreal compared to the Legos. Really? Had. Yeah. We had blocks. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Lincoln Logs? Oh, yeah. I we love had those. Lincoln Logs. What's this? It is, uh, even compared to, like, even the Legos that I had in the ninety, mm-hmm. yeah, well, in, yeah, I guess 90s and then, you know, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. You'll go, I'll go look at, like, I'll watch YouTube videos and comparisons. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Not even close. No. You saw that Bugatti I got, right? Yeah. That thing's 4,000 pieces. Yeah. They never it's, even dreamed they would make yeah. a Lego out of a 1,000 pieces, let alone The Legos 4, I had weren't even close to that. Yeah. And this is like, this is complex, right? Mm-hmm. And it's this is like a basic model. Yeah. This I, is considered like child's play. Is it? And it's... um. Yeah, I think it's rated for, <laughs> I think it's, yeah, seven-year-old. Seven-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this is, it's not even like, it's complex. There's a lot going on. Like, they got printed taillights. These are custom-made taillights just for this car. Hmm. Like, the fact that they, in the detail, there's so much better at doing things today. I think those go on... It looks like those are going to go one there and one there, and I'll find your other two. In the corners? Yeah. Yep. In the top. Oh, no, oh, up here. Oh, yeah, sorry. Here, uh-huh. put this on before you get all confused. That goes on right there. It's hard to lose your orientation. Um, I uh, I really... I, I think Legos are what got me into wanting to build shit. Mm-hmm. And one of my earliest memories, and it's ironic you said no Legos, you put the other one on like that. Um, you had like blocks, was because one of my earliest Lego memories was with a Mega Block. You remember that big purple monster truck I had? Oh, yeah. It had like a face on it. Mom kept telling me, don't play with that outside. You're going to lose it. Yeah. You're going to break it. I did. Yeah. And I broke it. And then I lost parts. And, um, you guys were building the house, and I don't know where you guys were at in the, like, if you were, I think that's when you guys were kind of on the separated, like, the mend. I don't know exact time frame, but, um, we were building the house, Mm -hmm. and I was playing with that around the foundation, and that's, like, one of my earliest memories, and that was a Mega Bloks, not even a Lego, but as all I can remember is construction, from Papa, or you working on cars or building things? Oh, and then yeah. me building Legos. Yeah, and now I build Legos for real, like buildings. And even like in the in the, um, some of the videos we watch in school and stuff, they describe it as uh-huh. Legos. I just building real Legos. Yeah, and I weld them together, and um, I just think that, like I always wonder with guys in my field, like how did you get involved? And that's, like, it's just, I think my passion for building things comes from Legos. And when I'm on jobs that I don't get to do a lot of building, like on the solar farms and stuff, Mm -hmm. it made me want to build more Legos. I really need to build things. It's like something that I, it's not just something I like doing, like I need to build things. Mm -hmm. And I don't have, like, the shop that I used to borrow your shop all the time and, you know, build all my horseshoe art and stuff. Oh, yeah. So I find my ability to get rid of that energy and stuff in uh like therapy like a like a kind of therapy i guess mm-hmm. you build legos and then i just turned it into a video and then, yeah so yeah, might as well try and do something with it and yeah that's how i got into this but for years i didn't play with legos for a long time since i was in since i lived with you guys yeah and then alexa and i lived in orlando and she um she worked for disney so disney when you work for disney you can go to disney whenever you want for free Mm -hmm. you got a card like you got your walmart card i got Mm -hmm. she got a disney card passes and so disney springs isn't at disney where you need a card but it um so we only because she was a part of it did I even go anywhere near Disney. Mm-hmm. It was kind of far. I didn't go, and I never needed to entertain anybody. Oh, so yeah. she would go, and they had a Lego um, other way, other side. 
right way, just the other side. They had a Lego store there, and they had a big, like, the you know, the statues they built out of Legos and stuff. Oh, yeah. And we bought a Lego, and that kind of was like, we bought a couple, she bought me one here and there, and, like, we built them together, but then... Again, a few years passed and a lot of work and a lot of traveling. And, and I kept in the back of my mind, like, man, I want to get a house or an apartment or I want to build some more Legos. Mm-hmm. And I ran into a guy in um, Hermiston. And we were on the job in Bickle. There's this little town. It's not a town. It has a bar, mm-hmm. no gas station. The bar is only open like Wednesday to Friday. Oh, from, wow. Yeah, at the afternoon. And that's where you go buy six pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. And um, now you need the clear ones. Well, you do that. I'll s- assemble this situation over here. Okay. And um, he was the operator of my forklift when we were doing an offload of all the solar panels. Yeah, that one. And then you need two of those. Yeah. And so he, his wife was bored. They don't have kids. His wife was. Uh, she got bored and needed something to do and just kind of lost her identity because he's working all the time, making money, and I got these two pieces. And then um, that's for the spoiler. Put that on this side. And so he saved up a bunch of money, and he went in and bought her a Lego store, like bought her a storefront, and they started a Lego business and invested like 15000 into product and mm. licensing. Uh-huh. And then... So he always had the in on these awesome sets in that that uh, the NASA space shuttle you see up there. Yeah, that was my first one I bought from oh, him. Oh, really? Yeah, and so and then I did a favor in the Lamborghini I have. He gave that to me for oh, oh so you got to move everything over one. Oh, oh, put that pull pull those to the right, both of them. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. And then in the middle. Oh, okay. And then on the edge. And um, so, honestly, I credit him for getting me back into the Legos. And then that Lamborghini he gave me for doing the work for him, Mm -hmm. that's the first one I used for my channel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and ironically, one of the best videos on the channel. But, yeah, a grown man playing with bricks, and he got me into it. And then I think that goes dead center. Dead center. Yep. And then those two go right behind it. And I thought that was cool. I was like, wow. Yeah. So he played. I didn't know. And then I got more into it. And, you know, most Legos are purchased by adults, which kind of makes sense, I guess. You're going you're gonna to buy me Legos, right? I'm not going yeah. to the store and buying Legos as a kid. But yeah. they market them to adults. There's like eight, yeah. like the big ones, like the Bugatti, the Lambo, the, the Shuttle. They're 18 and older sets. Mm-hmm. They're made for adults. And I didn't know that. I didn't know. I thought I was like a weird kid or whatever. And then, or, you know, a mm-hmm. man child <laughs> playing with bricks. And um, there's this fighter, Brandon Morano. He's a first Mexican uh, world champion in the UFC. Mm-hmm. He, you know what he does with his bon- win bonuses? Legos. Fucking goes and buys like <laughs> thousands of dollars in Legos. <laughs> world champion killer. Building bricks. Figures. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I just thought that was funny. And then this guy. So, what was it like? Like, um, raising two kids once you had, like, once they get older. Is that what, what uh, was the hardest part? Like, what was the hardest stage of? Mm, teenagers are hard. Yeah. Because they don't listen to you. I know that. <laughs> Hood scoop. Goes on the gray. I oh, think. Right Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you ever see yourself, like, so you said you don't like California. Um, uh, it's okay. What do you think happens with this law that Newsom just initiated? I don't think it's into law, but it's an order or whatever, right? Yeah. With the full EV by 2030 or 20... Was it 30 or 35 or... 35. That's that's 13 years. Yeah. Like, do you stupid. see it? Look how long it took a Tesla to get... No. Like, what that's are you... not going to happen. Can't make trucks to run like that. That's what I was going to yeah. ask. 
as a guy that's in the in in the know and the thing like with a tesla and i don't know about you gotta have a mechanic that can fucking work on it yeah you, you can't work on it no you don't have the tools no you don't have the knowledge you gotta retrain nope. you have no idea you need a fucking computer guy yeah and so you need a so like me in my industry to be a robotic welder you have to first master welding mm-hmm. become certified welder and then go to school again and master uh cad oh, and tech yeah. And you have to learn how to run the computer and the robot. And together, so you have two full careers. And together, you can become a robotic welder. So I'm assuming it's the same type of deal. So you'd have to go become a computer guy. It's like, I just don't see how that, like, you got to have a serious infrastructure. Like with Tesla, they're all in-house Tesla. You can only get a Tesla worked on by Tesla, which makes sense. Yeah. Because they're trained. Yeah, they have the tooling and everything. But you're going to find a fucking Tesla dealer in uh, Pahrump, Nevada? Yeah, no. You know, you're going to find one over where I was in the Dalles? No. What are you going to do? Yeah. You know, Red Bluff just lost all their power oh, or yeah. all their uh, internet. What yeah. are you going to do when their, inter- when their EV melts? Yeah. And, <laughs> like, no, it's ridiculous. It's a, no foresight, no ability to like, I like what you're saying, dude. You know, I support the green... Yeah, something's really going on, clearly. Mm -hmm. Now, it might just be a 100,000-year cycle of the climate, Mm -hmm. or there might be climate change. Yeah. That goes to that one. Okay. And then... um, Oh... Not quite. Something's going on there. I think it goes center up. So you see that there's that stud in the middle there? Oh, okay. That goes in that hole. Oh, Okay. Not one over shit. Ah, so you see this picture? Needs to fit like that. You see that right there? Where it's like recessed a little bit? That's weird. Let me see. I'll check it out. <clears throat> it is weird. It doesn't want to sit right. And I just don't think, like, why are you making these laws when you know, like, there's nothing in... You haven't pre Yeah, like that. Mm. You got to put... Build the infrastructure before you debut this. Like, you can't debut a rendering of a car if yeah. it's never been, you not even a prototype exists. And then this one goes right there. Hmm. Um, that's kind of what he's doing. Like, he's selling the eggs before they even had a chicken. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, you need to build up your infrastructure and, like, have a grid. You guys still have rolling blackouts. Yeah, yeah. Like, how it's are you not, supposed to? What it you, will never happen. Yeah. So yeah. it just feel like it makes you f- look dumb, dude. Yeah. Let me have that before you put that on. Um, oh, man, how it's got to be. It's and you pay taxes know. to that man. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where he thinks he's going to get all the gas taxes and everything for the roads. Right. <clears throat> In uh, I don't know, but I don't know if you noticed, but. America kind of runs on diesel. Mm-hmm. Every country runs on diesel. Yeah. Like the trains. Why don't you start with making an electric train first that can haul a million tons of freight? Yeah. That's two miles long. Yeah. You get that done. Well, they're electric diesel. Electrical They diesel. are electric. Mm-hmm. Oh, see? Well, but yeah, that's what I get for talking. They can't manufacture How's that work, a car then? to do that. It's a uh, diesels fire up the electric motors. Oh, um, what's going on there? No, it sticks out. It's cr- oh, there. No. Um, that's another th- interesting you say that. You need these two. That's another thing. All these fucking, it's just like fucking vegans. And I got nothing against vegan. My wife was vegan for years. And, um, but they don't realize, oh, I don't like killing animals. You just don't like killing big mammals. Because you're <laughs> going to kill rabbits moles, squirrels, fucking all kinds of bugs, just weed eating. I've killed a rabbit with a weed eater. Yeah. On accident. Yeah. Like in every field you fucking plow, you're killing the ground. Mm. You the monocrop agriculture is extremely detrimental to the ground. And that's how you kill all the nutrition in the land. Oh, and yeah. th- it's come out that because of that, they're actually baby foods even if you make them from scratch, mm-hmm. have extremely high metallic, uh, like metal content, because oh, really? the ground, 
So the ground that they're making, so, oh, okay, well, Gerber baby food has this, so I'll just make my own carrot puree. Yeah. But the carrot is bad. Yeah. So it's not that they're processing it bad. The food is bad. Mm -hmm. It's the carrots. It's the what? There was a couple different uh, food groups or foods in that group of bad, um, really hard, high in arsenic. Ar Arsenogenic. Um, yep. Yep. And it was bad. And I was like, oh my god. But you, there's nothing you can do. I mean, no. us having a garden here, and like you guys uh, doing your own garden, mm -hmm. and like. Tilling the like making the, oh no making the land, you know, um, compost and making better soil and putting the nutrients back in the soil is the best you can do. Mm -hmm. But as far as going to the store and buying some vegetables and making your fresh baby food, just as bad as buying it in a can. Oh yeah, because the soil is garbage, and that's how it is with these cars. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, it's a noble cause if you don't f fucking look too deep. But you know yeah. who makes those cobalt? You know who makes the batteries? Slaves. Yeah. Oh, we're not abolish slavery. America's racist. Yeah. Uh, dude, we own slaves, and like China owns slaves, and we pay them for them. Oh yeah. Like, it's like it's crazy. And then every single there's a black plume of smoke right behind your EV plug, bro. Mm -hmm. Like right behind your plug. You just don't see it. They buried the line and put it 500 miles away yeah. or whatever. But there's a plume of smoke somewhere making that. And I don't know if you've seen the windmills, but we build those and do the demo, like uh, repowers. Mm -hmm. They bury all the blades in the dirt, fiberglass oh, in the really? dirt. Yep. Nice. And they, they can't trans. It's like they have to shut down the road, get a police escort to transport those sometimes. And uh, when they go down windy roads, they got to use the whole road. So they'll have to shut it down. Hmm. And so they can't just be taking out all these and pay for something that, you know, it's not cost effective. They yeah. want to put it in the dirt right there on site. And uh, so it's just like fucking burying our garbage, <laughs> right? You're going to bury mm -hmm. it a landfill, bury it here. Yeah. And they can't burn it. It's glue and fiberglass. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? And every 10, 15 years, they got to do a repower, they call it, and they tear them down. And they completely rebuild them. From the ground up. They leave the tower sometimes if they don't use a different company in the future. But, uh, yeah, repower. Hmm. And then if you look closely, they look white. If you look directly under the rotor, all the way down, there's some of them that have grease streaks to the ground. Oh, yeah. The towers are 300 fucking feet tall. Yeah. You know what they do? Five-gallon buckets of grease, yeah. and they just keep squeaky wheel, gets the grease, right? Yeah. And they just keep throwing it on for decades. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, man, it's literally falling out the bottom. I guess we're going to replace it. That's what happens. And so that's got to be real good for the dirt, right? Oh, yeah. That's not in our water or anything. We yeah. don't get, like, the most water ever up there, and then it just runs off into the river that's within 20 miles. Yeah. No way. It's yeah, just like, it's... you guys are just a lot, like, but everyone, all these fucking sheep, dude, they just follow it. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, he's right. Go electric. Yep. No, oh, dude, go electric means more diesel. Yeah. And if you all go electric, it means the most diesel. You probably, and this is really out there, and what do you, I get your opinion, but you're probably going to go heavier on the diesel once you go fully electric. Oh, yeah. Because all those trucks, all those trains, yep. unless you got a nuclear power plant in every other city, yeah. you're going to be running primarily diesel yeah and then like um, places like china their water is drying up right now um, oh yeah did you put the, did you put a sticker on there mm -mm. 22 oh that's the bottom grill yeah they had this whole river in china dry up and they run primarily um china runs primarily uh hydropower hydroelectric so when that dries up or when you have a climate problem now you have no power so you need that backup even if diesel's a backup you gotta have it oh yeah yep and then so we're almost done i think we'll just call it on this uh this okay. this one we just gotta put the wheels on i think the roof yeah. okay what do we need we need mirrors oh what happened just must be an extra piece. Oh, that's cool. 
And then, so these are the mirrors. I'll work on getting these stickers on these two pieces. I jumped ahead. Oh, I think we might have missed those, but yeah, the mirrors go face. The slant will be on the outside, facing that way. Oh, okay. Like yeah. This? Yeah, just like that. When's the last time? It's been since I was a kid, huh? Yeah. I thought that was kind of um, one of the things that made me want to do this was that people that either never have or haven't done it in a while, it kind of, like, ideally would bring you back to, like, you know, not being so uptight and not mm -hmm. whoever's doing it, not be so, like, just be a kid again and do something fun, yeah. you know, and different and creative. Yeah. What was your experience? Like, what did you think about the whole thing? No, it was fun. Yeah. I had a good time. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. And it's, uh, I like, like, um, like for the family ones, like grandma, you, it'd be cr good for Felicity. I mean, she may have never watch them, but she might. And yeah. Especially when you guys are all gone and yeah. dead. When grandma's gone, I have a lot of grandparents I never got to talk to. I was yeah. just too little. And it'd be really cool if someone went ahead and had this conversation that I could go back and listen to. But the technology didn't exist. No. You know? And no. so, like, we always said, like, man, when grandma's gone, it's going to suck because we won't know who's related to anybody. Yeah. Because she's the family tree person. Yeah. And so now I, that's kind of like another... What's in the back of my head? That's why I really wanted to ask about, like, deeper questions about your, being a kid and growing up and, you know, mm -hmm. what it was like becoming a parent and stuff. And I think it's those rough, are upside but, down. Oh, really? yeah. It's rough, but you get it, you know. Yeah. I'm excited. She's a month old. Um, oh, well, yeah. she's four weeks old, so that's weird. Four weeks old tomorrow, but a month old on Saturday? Because the oh, days of yeah. the month aren't the same. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. But technically, if four weeks is a month, she's a month old tomorrow. Yeah. But if um, her date is a month, then... <laughs> so, so, what do we got next? Now, uh, your daughter's getting married. That came quick. Yeah. And out of nowhere. What do you yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it'll be cool. You excited for her? Yeah. I know you like Mikey a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty nah, cool. He's a good kid. So I'm I'm kind of glad. Good. That's exciting. I mean, what more can a parent ask for, right? Yeah. That's what you want to see. Know. And she's living her dream. I mean, isn't? did you ever think she'd be doing the cowgirl no. thing? Like, for real? No. No. It was always just like, yeah, do this for fun. But I never thought that she'd make a living... Not a lit. I mean, she is making a living out of it. Yeah. I mean, she's making money. Yeah. Selling horses, training, making money. It's really cool. Let's see. Is that how that goes? Shows No. Up. Those are just the roof studs. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you'll look in this picture to tell you what you need. And then that's like oh, a sub okay. assembly so you can put it on. And then hubs, rims. What rims do you want? Oh, does it come with different rims? Yeah. So you got these. I like, uh, I've put both on, but you got the multi spoke or the five spoke? Uh, Just for the front. So the back gets the deeps for the fatties, right? Probably on. So the radials get the drag radials. What do they snap in there? Yeah. That one will go on there. And this is for the back. And those are cool. They print these rotors in there, huh? Slotted oh, rotors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where's you, the other five spoke? Right there. The demon. It's cool that they got it. So um, it's cool they did the demon like this because that's right. The demon had the sub model where you could, you know, you could buy it with the skinny fronts oh, and the yeah. back big yeah. fats so you got that but you can also put the rims on so you got your driving yeah. your daily driver that's a pretty sick car yeah all right let's bring it out here so this is what we built we got this uh 2018 dodge demon 
is uh, if you had a dream car, what would it be? Mm. Would this be on the list, or would there be what? What is your dream car? I know you have a probably, car you love, but probably a no money sixty nine or seventy Charger RT with a four twenty six Hemi. Oh, you mean that one? Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, you know what? I will save this and then uh, probably do it with mom. Okay. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Cool. All right, everybody. And uh, this is my dad, John. And this is another episode of the Lego Chronicles podcast. Peace.